So I got my clutch from this company. I can't yet speak to its durability, but it's worked fine for the first thousand miles. And I laid the new uh, flywheel on top of the old one to see that everything lined up, the holes and the, the outer dimension. I used the uh, alignment jig that came with the clutch and it, it fits the bearing so I'm pretty comfortable that I got uh, a good replacement clutch I think it's gonna fit got a bearing here to tap in place before I install the flywheel and uh, it looks flat on both sides I can't see any difference either side even the uh, nomenclature here is the same thing on both sides I noticed that the original bearing is a flush fit flush with this surface so I'm gonna set this in place now and tap it in until it's flush with this I'm not gonna use any oil I, I don't want it coming back out there's a 45 degree bevel right here that makes setting this in place real easy. And I found a socket that's flat and I can use it for a driver. Nothing's going to hit the seal or the bearing except on these outer metal surfaces. I'll just see how it goes here. Okay, and here's one I want to start doing it by hand because I can see this is lower here than this is, so I want to tap on the high side. And this is in my element. I feel comfortable driving seals and bearings with my little ball peen hammer. I used to do a lot of it. And I'm tipping my hammer out slightly so that all of the impact is going out. So my hammer's like that here, and it's like that here, it's like that here, and it's like that here. Now I'm just going flat. Need to go a little more. It's pretty foolproof as far as not going too deep because the hammer is not penetrating. There, I've got her, got her flush. Ready to put the flywheel on now. This came literally coated in oil in a plastic bag and that was to prevent any surface rust so I've cleaned it real well I used brake cleaner and rags get both hands under this heavy thing Got my bolts handy here so I don't have to hold it any longer than necessary. You know, I've got a compressor over here, and I could be driving these in with an air wrench, but. I just, I don't like the racket. I kind of enjoy this work using my hands and that noisy little compressor kind of spoils the mood for me. I looked up the uh, torque specifications. So I'm gonna go about 53 pounds and I think I'll just start out by hand. took those bolts off by putting a screwdriver in here so I think I'll just do it again 
maybe in a couple places and uh, see if that works that clicking sound is the wrench telling me that that's as far as it's got to go I usually, when it's a circle like this, I usually alternate. Started here, then I'll go here, then I'll probably go here and then there, and then probably there and then there. If it's if I'm tightening bolts in a row, I'll start in the middle and work myself out. The idea is if if something's got a little kink in it or something, you want to cinch down the middle and then work your way out to kind of press everything out in in order so I did this one and this one I think so now I'll do this one if I look at this flywheel I see two pins coming out of it one here and one there I would expect a third one, but there there isn't one. And I see what is the uh, spot where a drill bit went in, made this hole, and punched part of a hole in the actual flywheel, or the part with the gear teeth on it. So that's nothing to be concerned with. That had something to do with taking some weight off to balance the flywheel spin. So what, what I've got is two pins and six holes. Notice the block I set here to make life easy on myself. This, this thing's pretty heavy to move around with your fingertips. So what I need to do is line up these six holes with corresponding holes in the flat parts of the pressure plate. So if I go here, it looks like the holes would line up, but this pin is uh, sticking out into some mechanical works here. That doesn't look right. That's, that's an alignment dowel, an alignment pin, and it, it needs to do something. There's two of them. So both those pins need to be in what I'm assuming is these smaller holes here and they're kind of full of paint so that may not help any so we'll try it right there there's a spot that that pin goes the screw holes are aligned looks like that's it right there the pins are accounted for the holes are lined up I'm going to mark this so I know right where to put it back. The new friction disc and the old one. Looks like they're about the same height. One obvious difference is that on the flywheel side of this one, and I know it's the flywheel side because it says so right there on my old friction disc. This one is not labeled. But on uh, the two, this difference, there's a difference here. The uh, hub sticks out past the friction pads. On this one, that hub is way inside of it, of the friction pads. So, let's look at that. This goes up here. Okay, as long as this doesn't hit that, I'm good. And it's not going to. There's plenty of clearance there. Actually, there's more clearance with this one 
than that one. This is probably the best way to verify that the friction plate fits the car. That looks pretty good. Splines are nice and snug. This friction disc came with uh, a tool, a plastic alignment dowel. That's nice. When I put this up in place, this uh, pressure pad is very close to the flywheel. So it'll, but there's some clearance. So it will go without the friction disc in place. I can snug this right up. Now when the friction disc goes in, it's a different story. That's going to fill the gap. So it, it, this will not go all the way against the flywheel the way it just did. So you can see why it's important to torque these six screws in such a way as it's not kinking this unit from one side to the other. When this is torqued down, the pressure plate is held firmly against the flywheel. And so it's going to turn this, which represents the transmission shaft, and drive the car, make the car move. When the throwout bearing presses against these guys, it pulls the uh, pressure disc inside this back so that disc can freewheel. The flywheel is disengaged from the the disc and the plate, plate inside here. That's the uh, transmission being dis disengaged. Now, if you look, I can move this up and down and that pressure plate, see it move? Okay, so even with this tool, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that that uh, friction disc in here is lined up, that it's centered. When I wiggle this tool, I can feel it go up that high and down that low. And I'm getting a feel for it and I'm going to go halfway. And I'm going to do the same thing left and right. All the way left, all the way right. Do it a few times so i got a feel for it. Halfway. So I think it's centered now. And I'm going to start torquing the screws. Okay, so I'll give this half a turn. Come down to the bottom, give it half turn. Half turn half turn, half turn, half turn, repeat, half turn, half turn, half turn. And so what we're doing is shoving the uh, pressure plate against the friction pad against the flywheel. So when we're done, the clutch will be engaged. I'm just going to look and see how it's going. Got about an eighth, a sixteenth.
I'm just watching to see what the gap is. I can still stick my fingernail in here. And that'll be my gauge now. That feels pretty open. As does this one. That's almost all the way. Yeah, I'm there. There's my clutch. So I'm about ready to put my motor on a uh, motor stand and then I can put the head gaskets and heads on and do the uh, timing belt. Catch you later.